I, I told his buddy, hey, I have a crush on her. Well, I didn't think he would tell her, right? Right. He tells her probably over AIM or something. This yeah. AIM was oh, our, our, AIM. Our, way of yeah, com- our, our way of communication. Yeah, so he tells her. And literally, same day, brand new, uh, same first day of school, she comes up to me mm. with all the popular girls that I know. It's like, you have a crush on me? Don't ever have a crush on me or something like that. Oh, literally just, shit. literally just telling me oh. like I should not like oh. her, whatever. <laughs> It's your boy Corey. It's your boy John. And welcome back to the Artistry Drop where we feature stories from today's rising artists. Yes, sir. If you like being inspired, don't miss out on our weekly episodes. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell notification to be notified when we drop new episodes. Guys, it is just me and Nipple Boy once again. Yes, sir. Honestly, like I said, you know, in the previous episodes, and I'm going to keep saying this, we love just having this opportunity just me and him conversating i mean this is our podcast that one-on-one time yeah we we did you know we did create this and you know i feel like because you know we've been best friends forever like we we know each other years like almost 10 years guys we we know each other's uh sense of humor and we're able to joke around but when it comes to you know having a guest we're limited right so we love being able to you know express ourselves a little bit more when it comes to you know just one-on-one episodes me and him deserve um but yeah, I hope you guys will enjoy this episode. This episode is going to be all about models. Um, obviously, you guys should know already, we are filmmakers, vide- videographers, photographers, and we work with models quite a bit. And what we wanted to do was talk about the difference between uh, models that are assigned to an agency and models that are just IG models. And mm-hmm. like I said, I... I well, I haven't said it before. <laughs> I haven't said it before, but I'm just saying like now, uh, I, I don't like saying IG models because, you know, I, I, I'd i rather stick with saying just models in general. Um, I feel like when you say IG models, they're just strictly IG models. Um, but we're, we're going to just talk in general. We'll about, dive in too yeah, deep. We'll, a little bit we'll, about we'll it dive a little bit deeper into mm-hmm. it. But, you know, of course, before we do, we have to get into the drink of the day. All right. The drink of the day. You know, I want to kind of speak before I get to the drink of the day. I want to speak upon like the live stream that we just did right before this episode. Yes. Um, so we did a little behind the scenes and we showed like what it took to get to this drink and also like what it looks like behind basically the scenes, this, the scenes yeah. in this studio because mm-hmm. you know a lot of people are fooled and they think that you know we have our own separate studio but they don't really know that it's actually in our living room yes so right we, in our apartment so yeah we did a live stream and we we're thinking about doing it more often you know it's kind of a more of an experimental um uh, thing that we're trying so like if you haven't seen the live stream like hit the comments and let us know like if that's something you want to see in the future but also let us know in the comments below like if this mm-hmm. is something that you want to see in general like right. we like i said me and john um if you guys watch previous episodes we do have content coming right, right. that's outside of just episodes it's going right. to be a lot more behind the scenes type of stuff and mm-hmm. you know i we're experimenting but we think it's going to be dope content to show our viewers because we are artists ourselves right. i feel like um there are people out there that think we just do this podcast right but guys we are artists ourselves right. we created this podcast for other artists to come on right but aside from that we create art as well we're exactly. photographers filmmakers and videographers so we wanted to show or give a behind the scenes look at what we do for yeah. our specific and art. not only just that but like we want to inspire other podcasters who want to start their own podcast and show like how we started and what goes on behind the scenes because you know a lot we only show like this half of the room so really showing what goes on and the prep work it really takes you know hopefully it inspires like other people who want to start a podcast and you know um you know it hasn't been all like um uh, sunshine you know essentially so yeah we definitely want to uh help out other people too and show and kind of like expose us in a way that might help other people who want to start doing the same thing but yeah We interrupt this episode with a word from our sponsor. Are you looking for a way to energize for the day? We got a product that will do just that. Introducing Gamer Subs. Gamer Subs is a keto-friendly, zero-calorie, zero-sugar-based energy drink that introduces nootropics to sharpen focus and increase reaction time. Gamer Subs is also organic caffeine base that will maximize energy and endurance. To make it easier, each scoop used is 100 milligrams so you don't go over your daily limit. 
Each tub of Gamer Subs contains 100 servings. Gamer Subs also provides caffeine-free tubs for those that just want their daily vitamin dose without the need for caffeine. Not only do they have energy drinks, they also have dope merch, such as these waifu cups, t-shirts, and hoodies, and much more. Are you ready to energize with Gamer Subs? Use our code Artist You Drop on their website and receive a 10% off discount. Hey, now back to the show. Yeah, so the drink of the day, guys. Yeah, so we're going right into the drink of the day. So this is an Artist You Drop special. Honestly, I just like freehanded it. I knew that we love Blue Curacao because one of we his do. favorite drinks yep. is Blue Hawaiian. Yes, so I is. had to hit it with that blue curse out. It has that black Malibu, which is 35%. And then we had that plantation straight from the motherland, the Jamaican rum that's like super strong. So I, I mixed the two alcohols and then I hit it with that cream of coconut. Um, what else did I hit it with? Uh, uh, sweet and sour mix and also... He, he's so uh, drunk, guys, he doesn't remember what yeah, he hit yeah, it with. I, 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 I hit it with a lot of things. We, we are about four or five shots I, in yes, right now. We, yes. we deep. And we have an eight, so we have it's, an eight. It's, it's definitely hitting. Yes. And then, so after I added all that, topped it off with ice, of course, and then um, I topped it off with... <laughs> <laughs> the raspberry lemonade okay. uh, on the top. So um, I wish I had crushed ice because it definitely gives that like ombre kind of look. It, it's supposed to be blue and then red uh, coming up. But since I don't have crushed ice to kind of like filter the colors, you know, it's kind of mushed in together. But, you know, we all start somewhere and you work with what you have and uh, it still tastes bomb. Yeah. Um, I had to taste it before I, I poured it to just make sure the mixes are right. And I garnish it with lime and some mint leaves. And honestly, this is the blue razzmatazz from the artist you drop. Oh, there we go. And guys, you if you already know, like maybe you don't know <laughs> if you don't watch our episodes enough. <laughs> but uh blue Hawaiian is my definitely my favorite, and this shit looks like a blue Hawaiian. I was there right. watching him uh make the drink live. I never watch him dr uh, make the drinks because I like being surprised, but you know, we're trying to we're we're doing new things here, you know, at the artist you drop. So it was definitely a different thing and i was like damn this shit looks like a blue hawaiian and it, it looks fire so i'm excited to kind of get into it and try to taste it all Let's right go ahead take it cheers. cheers yes sir go and that shit is spilling I right know. now it's a good podcast Ooh, that shit Ooh. good you gotta mix it a little bit but yeah no 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 it, it's layered but yeah that's definitely good it is strong i i can taste that jamaican rum oh yeah the jamaican yeah. rum is strong it is it's like rum but like times two yeah like, i, I don't know it. why it's so strong but it's from the motherland it is i mean it's, it's not me. our motherland <laughs> it's not mother, it's not our motherland it's not our motherland it's somebody's but. motherland <laughs> and that shit is raised from the ground <laughs> <laughs> that shit is strong. It I is though. No, like slapped. guys, if you have not tried Jamaican rum, this shit is powerful. So, mm. you know, I think even one shot, one or two shots, you're probably done. Yeah, I put one shot. I Only remember. Shot. I remember uh, when he was making the last drink of the day on our last episode, mm -hmm. and I can actually smell it over twenty to thirty feet away. So that kind of shows you guys already, like. That shit is strong. So, Hell yeah. all right, guys. So, you know, that's enough of that. We're going to dive. <laughs> we're going to dive right in now to, you know, our topics of which, you know, of course, models like we spoke on earlier. So what I want to speak on is finding models to work with. That's going to be one of our first topics to talk about. And um, it was definitely, you know, it was one of those things. It was complicated for me because. Mm -hmm. I had just started photography around 2015, 2016, and there was, I, I did not think about photography, taking up photography as a professional art or anything like You're that. Just I, film. Yeah, I, I was all film. Mm -hmm. I was going to film school during that time, and I hated photography. Like, I actually said to myself, I was like, photography is stupid. Why mm -hmm. would I pursue photography? Why? Why though? I don't know. Like, yeah. it was just one of those things. Like, I never actually tried. Right. I never actually attempted to try photography, but, um, the reason why I finally took it up was because uh, when I was working with some artists, they left Seattle. We're originally from Seattle, if you guys didn't know, but they left Seattle, kind of yeah. left me stranded. I've mentioned this many times on the podcast, but yeah, there's nobody else for me to work on, so uh, work with. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna still utilize my camera. I'm gonna start sh shooting photos, even though I was totally against it. So you know what I did was, of course, hit up John 
hit up some uh, other people. Hey, let's shoot some photos. So, you know, we went ahead and shot some photos and stuff like that. And that's when I started really loving photography. It's crazy to think that I actually hated it in the first place. But right. now I, I totally love it as an mm -hmm. art form, you know. And um, at that point, I was like, you know what? I, I need a go outside a little bit more i gotta try to reach out to actual models try right. people that are also trying to pursue like photography mm -hmm. i guess you know models are definitely trying to pursue photography it's just a, a different art form they're right. they're showing themselves right. in the portrait versus us we're taking the portrait you mm -hmm. know so you know i was really trying to trying hard to figure out a way to do it so of course social media is big so what i had to do was go on my stories um utilize my stories oh no no okay i, I i'm trying <laughs> to do I'm, venture I, I, off, man. I, i'm venturing Bro. off too I, you know i hey i'm uh, buzzing right now uh, too, guys. So, buzzing. Yeah, i'm buzzing right now so okay let me backtrack a little bit okay <laughs> so what i did was i ended up following a lot of uh females that were located in C in the seattle area and stuff yeah. you know that people that were um either models i wouldn't say models like i said these are girls that were really cool with taking photos of themselves yeah. and so of course i followed them you know mm -hmm. and um at that time you know i was following so many so many females and then when i was like okay they're following me back they mm -hmm. they had seen some of my work you know right maybe they like some of my work right okay so that's to the point where i was like okay you know what i'm gonna go ahead and um post something on right. uh instagram and you know stories try, yeah stories and stuff like that but i'm still getting ahead of myself yeah right. <laughs> i'm still getting ahead of myself so uh before i before i do get ahead of myself i also want to say um find <laughs> hey john's over here nodding at me hey we are definitely in a little deep guys i'm sorry okay we, let me let me help this man okay, let, let me let me let go john ahead. help a little bit yeah. okay let john help a so little bit. before we started like reaching out to all these like instagram models and stuff like that you know we kind of needed to find ourselves and like um and the only people who were accessible was like family and friends so you know when you're first starting out with photography you don't know if you want to shoot por portraits right you you are still exploring what type of photography you are good at and what you enjoy so you know uh shooting a lot of friends and family was the was like our go-to when yes. we were first starting out you know when we uh you know we're first hanging out and stuff like that i was super into dance you know mm -hmm. i didn't hate photography but you know it was just something, he was just not familiar with yeah, it. And, yeah. I, and i wasn't familiar and also like it wasn't my uh, kind of like my niche or like what i was focused on at the time but since uh cory would always bring me on and he would take photos of me and i was interested in the camera so you know i would always take his camera and shoot photos as well so he would even take photos of me yeah take photos yeah, of yeah. him as well so you know it was just like an, a natural thing and we were mm -hmm. always together so i was like yeah let me just try try to use your camera and out of that you know I, I ended up buying my own camera and then also like shooting with friends and family too of like just anybody who is accessible so you know anybody who's starting out you know don't be feel intimidated that you need to be a portrait photographer you know and you need to like reach out to models you know it's just something that we love to do and mm -hmm. but it's also like there's also foundation and groundwork that goes into it you know once you start shooting with your friends and family you kind of get a feel of um you know what direction you need to give and like how you work as a photographer as well so they're kind of like your guinea pigs essentially so um yeah before getting into instagram we definitely did a lot of family and friends no that yeah. is facts and like i said that's what i would do you know um even it wouldn't even just be family or friend i mean if you can of course i consider dogs my friend my family you know right. they're they're raising and your tier, friends and your friends <laughs> um but that was one thing i would do is be uh you know Take, try to take portraits of my dog you know lucky right, right, and true. our uh our and late, that's a challenge because it is. they don't stay still no they don't yeah. stay still uh our late dog simba uh he recently just passed last year um so rest in peace to simba but yeah yes. you know that was another person uh those were other objects i would try to take is uh my dog saying of course if you're a dog lover you're really gonna try to take portraits of your dog oh, yeah. and that was one thing i really try to do with my dog lucky but of course, like, you know, John said, it's hard to take pictures of your dog, but it was in that realm, no matter mm -hmm. what I would try, I would take pictures of my sister, Reyna, I would take photos of my mom and dad and just everything. Of, yeah, everything, you yeah. know, but of course, you know, uh, the closer group, you, mm -hmm. uh, 
Are there homies? Oh, homies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are certain people out there I can't really yeah, mention. You I know, know. I, I can't really mention. But yeah, yeah, watch no, the last episode. Yeah, watch the last episode, and you will know yeah. what we're talking about. But no, like John was definitely one of my go tos. Uh, one of my other, you know, brothers, CJ. He was definitely a go to as well. Robin. Uh, and, Robin. Yeah. yeah, you know, another go to, and you, you know, we were all definitely shooting together mm-hmm. quite a bit mm-hmm. when uh, we found out, like you know, photo. Photography is definitely something we can probably evolve into doing yeah. something. And you know? it was so easy because it's short. It doesn't take that much time no. as far as like filmmaking. Mm-hmm. Filmmaking, you know, you there's a lot of prep time. But you know, photography is just on the go. Whatever no, you're doing, is. you know, you just snap it real quick, mm-hmm. and you know, you fix your settings, and and yeah, you're just yeah. good to go. It's no, like exactly. Again. Yeah, yeah. And you know, that's exactly what we were doing, guys. It's just shooting with family, friends, dogs, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like right. I said, it is tough, but hey. That's what you got to utilize at that time, especially right, right. when you're getting when you're just getting into the field, uh, the field. It's it's hard to ask people to shoot with if you don't have any work to show. Right. So you do have to kind of produce some kind of work before you actually reach out to people. Exactly. Now we are going to move forward to, to, <laughs> to one, the part he's to, been to wanting to, part, to touch yes, on to the part I actually have been t- wanting to touch on. So this is where, you know, I, th- at this point, after, you know, taking photos of John, CJ, Robin, my dog, my (laughs) my family, everybody, I was able to, you know, finally post some of my work and show what I can actually do. So at this time, this is where I was like, you know what, I I think I'm gonna offer some free photo shoots. So what I did was went on stories and uh, to backtrack a little bit, you know, I had already grown my following, maybe like 10,000, 11,000 followers so you know I had quite a bit of Seattle people following me small flex yeah small flex I, mm. I you know I'm not trying to flex that much obviously you <laughs> not know, that much not that much bit. but it, you know I'm, I'm just trying to show that like I went from this point to this point right you know and um I actually I eventually had enough followers to show that I had this much work mm-hmm. uh to show for so I can get more work and work with other people outside of right. friends and family and my dog <laughs> <laughs> you know so yeah I finally posted something on my stories saying you know hey free photo shoots um hit me up if you guys are willing to do it mm-hmm. and this is where it got crazy so you know, I, I already had a lot of models or, you know, what people will call Instagram models follow me back after I had followed them. Right. And um, it was just crazy the amount of people that actually responded to me after posting that story. Right. I had over, I want to say 50 to 60 people in the first posting Damn. hit me up and say, hey, would love to shoot mm-hmm. with you as well. Mm-hmm. You know why, guys, is because the keyword was free. free. Yeah, obviously free. Yeah. Like once people see free, they're going to hit you up and ask you, hey, yeah, I would love to shoot. So, of course, and I that's what I was offering. I was offering free shoots. So I would book all these people, um, you know, we would schedule shoots and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And that's at the point where, you know, John kind of came into that to that picture as well i mean we are moving forward a little <laughs> a little fast but it, yeah. it's it is during that time right, right literally once i started um scheduling these shoots you know i hit up john and was like hey bro like um i got a lot of models that mm-hmm. want to shoot with uh, with me and stuff are you are you down to come through on the shoot he's like yeah you know i'll come check it out and stuff yeah. like that and you know john finally came through and he was using you know before he bought his camera i would let him use my camera you know i would uh what we would do is we would tag team on uh, our shoot so you know i would go ahead and shoot first he would kind of you know since he was still new to it uh photography he would yeah. kind of see how i work and yeah. stuff like that and then you know i would pass my camera over to him uh, and I think we talked on this, uh, we touched on this on our last episode before, or a couple episodes, yeah. you would bring your own memory card right, right. so you can actually save your own photo shoots as well. So, right. you know, he would, once it was uh, his turn, you know, pop in his memory card and do what he needs to do. Right. But of course, you know, you guys know already, John is a little bit more introverted. So he, right. like I said, <laughs> he was learning from the backs, you know, the, the behind the scenes and, yeah. you know, trying to learn from me. So. Once he got into it, you know, it, like I, we said, I had a little conversations with him, bro. Like, right, you right. need to talk a little bit more. Like, <laughs> it's a little can, awkward. Yeah, it was a little awkward yeah. for him. But, you know, like, he's definitely doing a lot better. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to let you talk on that. Yeah, but, like, um, yeah, when we were first starting out, yeah, trading off cameras, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. But, like, I was, like, you know, I come from a dance background, and we don't. When you uh, dance, you know, you're performing on a stage or at a battle, you know, there's no talking involved. You just do what you need to do. You get it done. It's like 
five ten minutes you 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 done you good but like going into you know i spoke on this before like going into being a photographer and you know talking to the model and and directing them and posing them and stuff like that it was a whole different field for me so definitely like uh going on these shoots and stuff built me and took me out of my shell and took me out of my comfort zone and I, and I'm and I'm glad it, it did you know um yeah, I'm glad I'm, it did too yeah, yeah. <laughs> it became a long way for sure yeah so yeah and then um so when he started getting models off of IG you know a lot of times you know I, well before um I got my uh camera you know a lot of times you know they would follow me and we would and once I got my camera uh you know we would do our own separate shoots and and stuff like that and so it kind of built my clientele because we were already, you know, working together and then they knew our, our reputation and what uh, photos we could produce. And off of that, you know, it kind of it, it kind of just like kept rolling and rolling and rolling. And then we just built off of that. And now now we're doing it big. Like, no, we we doing it out yeah, here now, guys. You know, like I said, you know, it's it's going that's literally going into the next thing is producing more work right right um you know once you start producing tons more work on your instagram profile you're tagging your photos and you know correctly and everything right people are gonna find you right you know so i would say once you start producing a lot more work people are gonna start following you back they're gonna start following your work they're gonna you're gonna inspire them especially for those that are just getting into photography yeah so i would say produce a lot of work no yeah, matter what don't, because don't you, stop yeah because if you think about it like when you work with the model right you do shoot the photos you edit it and they post it onto their page now their followers see it Facts. and then it's just like a, a, a ripple effect mm-hmm. you know and then the models that are following her who might look up to her or like are friends with her are now you know see the tag um, that's one thing that's important as a photographer, you know, always, you know, when 100%. you um, just talk with the model when you're shooting with them, you make sure that you have a mutual conversation that like, I'm going to do these photos for you. And all I ask is for, you know, you to tag me Yeah. because the tag goes a long way because now when they post your photos and they have you tagged now, all their friends, <laughs> family, mm-hmm. you know, other people who follow them now see that the work that you produce they click on that tag and then now they hit you up and then there's a whole new client yeah you know so just having um that tag you know goes a long way and the more uh photos you produce and the more people you work with you know it's it's a ripple effect again no it is and yeah like i said you know i I would say that's definitely a big thing in the Instagram community because there are some photographers that still don't get credited for some of the work. Some models either forget to tag uh, the photographer because, of course, they're so excited about posting. And we've dealt with that. Yeah, we've dealt with that before, Mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, I feel like that it's still a thing, though. Like maybe some models are so excited about, you know, just getting their uh, photo posted and such like that and, you know, posting that. Some photographers will take it to the heart. Where, like, hey, you forgot I'm the one that shot this photo for block you. Block you. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and I've heard stories about that. You're right. You know, I've heard stories about some photographers getting so offended by the model. Yeah. You know, of mm-hmm. course, like, I understand that. Right. I understand we are the ones that took the photo. The model forgot to tag us or mm. didn't talk about us to actually taking the photo because right. they're the main focus of that photo. Right. But you know you you evolve right. as an artist i feel like or a photographer maybe maybe some of you guys still stay the same it doesn't right. matter like i everybody's different you know right. but for me i would say as a photographer and artist filmmaker and all that like i could care less right I, my art is still getting out there no matter what like right. it, it it doesn't matter maybe i am not getting credit credited for it but i know i did that that piece of work right, right. you know I, i'm not gonna get totally offended i'm not gonna hit up the model and hey, hey you forgot to tag me i've never once did that mm. i've never once hit up a model and say hey you forgot to tag me or anything yeah. and i've heard stories about yeah. photographers saying that to other models yeah. and, but you know hey that's them that's right. fine i'm not gonna get totally offended by that mm-hmm. as long as my work gets out there and mm-hmm. this is another thing is if other mod and i this has happened to me before if other models artists or whatever and they, hey who shot this right. well they're curious in my work so of course the model is going to finally say oh 
this this person mm-hmm. this person hopefully well, that, yeah, yeah 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 i mean of course but it's it's great it's it, it's still a good feeling of somebody else wanting to know who shot this photo or right, right. who shot this music video because of you know the artist forgot to tag him right. if nobody's really interested that's fine that means they're just really not interested in right. your work or not interested in having a photo shoot that's fine i could care less right. but if somebody actually says hey who shot this music video who shot this photo you should feel well about yourself because somebody's really interested in your right. work, you know, and that's how I am. So, mm-hmm. you know, I people out there like your other photographers, artists, like I wouldn't, I would say, don't get totally offended. Of course, mm-hmm. we all should have our work and art credited, but you know, your work is out there anyways, right. and people are gonna once people ask about it, who shot this, who that just shows like people are really interested, and of course exactly. they they are gonna tell you. You know who who did this? So like exactly. what would you say? Yeah, I mean, definitely in my earlier days, I would I would be one of those people who would like get offended, and I would be the one hitting them up. Hey, you didn't tag I me. I know. You know. Yeah, you yeah. told me about yeah, these. Yeah, I was like, hey, you didn't tag yeah. me. You got you got to take it down. You know, repost it. Yeah. And a lot of times, most of the time, you know, they're like, oh, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I totally forgot. Mm-hmm. And then they'll take it down. They repost it like right away. Tag me and stuff like that. So it hasn't been like a a huge issue uh, for me. Um, but yeah, as you as you uh, you know uh, mature in the industry, you realize that you know a lot of people don't really you know credit you and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But when it comes to of course like music videos that we shoot and stuff like that, they they do credit you yeah, at, at the end and, and stuff like that. So that's expected. But when mm-hmm. it comes to like these simple photos, you know a lot of times you know we've toned into um, our editing style so like keenly that like. You know, a lot of people can recognize us from from our editing style mm-hmm. as well. So, you know, it's is sometimes it doesn't even need to be tagged yeah. because they're like, oh yeah, you know, Corey did this, did, did did these photos. Mm-hmm. You know, they already recognize the signature of the editing, yeah. and um and if they don't know them, you know, he, they they ask like mm-hmm. he, like he was saying. So, you know, I think there is some like insecurity behind that of like being tagged and not being tagged. You know, once you are in the industry and you build that confidence and you're like, you know, I don't really need to be tagged because my work is out there, like you were saying, and I'm already uh, credited and you know the models that i do work with especially you know when we get into it like the ig and agency models they are willing to um you know tell other people who shot the photos if Mm -hmm. if they did uh uh if they did ask and which goes on to our next topic was like reputation yes you know um when you have a good reputation uh with your models you know others won't be feel like discouraged to like work with you and you know we've had models on our podcast too who kind of express you know we always ask about those creepy and weird stories the juicy stuff the juicy stuff as as he says um and we uh, once we hear the stories we also ask them you know how do you uh, screen a photographer uh, before you shoot with them, yes. you know, and how do you know they're creepy and um, what are some red flags? And, you know, one of the things that they said was um, I always hit up um, the other models that they work with. And that is ties into the reputation that you carry on yourself. You know, if uh, the model that you shot with, you know, already thinks you're a creep and then this other model who wants to work with you hits up that model then of course they're gonna be they're gonna be like oh yeah he was kind of creepy it was cool for that one time but i would probably never work with them again then your word the word gets out and we've talked about this on so many other episodes how there's a blacklist of photographers that are blacklisted and who you shouldn't work with so reputation is key and um but once you have a good reputation you know i feel like we do have a have a great reputation you know word of mouth goes by so quick and uh, they're just referring other people to to you, and it's just this uh, ripple, an, another ripple effect, and you're just getting clientele and uh, book, other bookings and stuff like that. So it's it's been really successful for us. Guys, just don't get yourself on that blacklist. It's it's literally that's it. Like like we said, you know, reputation is a hundred percent of what models are gonna look for because. Right. Even, you know, our model friends, that's one thing they look for. They right. they know how to uh, spot creepy photographers and stuff like that. So just don't be creepy in general. Like, don't right. be don't be creepy. Like, ha- keep, keep a good reputation, you know. Be professional. 
if you don't know how to be professional, I don't know what you guys right, are right. doing. Like, you know, I mean, in general, I would say if you are introverted, mm-hmm. like John was, you mm-hmm. know, I, I would say, you know, he he's he's progressed a lot. You know, right. I've known John since he was uh, a, a super teenager. <laughs> <laughs> since he that was a child. True. That is true. <laughs> no, no, no. I've known John since he was super introverted. Yeah. Like, you know, he he was he wouldn't talk as much and only talk yeah. when he was questioned. But yeah. I feel like, you know, the fact that I finally brought him into this kind of environment where you literally have to speak. Right. It's opened his mind quite a bit you know yeah, yes. uh like dr strange you know <laughs> oh, and, uh, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. yes <laughs> yes power of the Vash- <laughs> power of the vashanti yeah. yes you know like it, it opened his mind quite a bit so it's like i feel like a lot of photographers out there if you are more introverted guys just learn to speak a little bit more mm-hmm. like if you ne- there are cl- i mean i yeah. <laughs> i don't want to be yeah. offending anybody out there that don't know really really how to speak but there are like classes there yeah. are videos out there but i think on- coming from an introvert i'm like the perfect person to speak no, yeah, about yeah, it yeah. and i i would definitely let john speak a, about it a little more i'm <laughs> i'm extroverted i'm super extroverted to the point where i don't have issues talking with anybody right, right. but i i, I just want to say like that's where i think the issue lies is where people or photographers come off creepy is because you're introverted right, right. you don't really know what to say you might say the wrong thing right and in general, just, you know, don't practice a little bit, you know. And I right. I mean, if you can talk on that a yeah. little bit and help out. I think that's a good topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, t- talk a little bit about it because, I mean, How I feel like. How to not be introverted. Yeah, no, I, I don't want to say introverted because there's always going to be people, people right. that are introverted. But yeah. I just want to say people that are introverted to a certain point where right. they, they get either nervous or scared to talk. Right. or You know, because you definitely for a model to be comfortable with you mm. you have to be extroverted oh yeah for sure because the model is going to be super nervous super scared i want to say scared but. she's just going to be uh it, she's going to feel awkward around right, you right. you know so i yeah. would feel i i would say like you are definitely uh-huh. the better person to ask about it yeah, yeah yeah no definitely being more extroverted on the day of the shoot definitely brings out you know i mentioned this in other uh, episodes as well like brings out the best of not only you but the best of them too because um not only have you have you opened up uh but they opened up too and um i mentioned this in a in a previous podcast but it's like uh once you make them feel comfortable and you're comfortable as well the concepts just like keep flowing in and you know once you present a concept then they um they feed off of that energy and the end result is so much better when you guys are both on the same page fueling each other's fire you know and so that's definitely something that comes with the experience especially for like an introverted person because you know i was very you know like like cory mentioned i was very um shy and i would i would only answer when you know people would question or ask me things and you know we've met other models who also like uh met with awkward photographers they're not creepy they're just like awkward because they're shy maybe it's their first couple of shoots you know they don't know how to direct and things like that so um i would say one thing that's helped me you know I can only speak on my past experience and you know being with Corey definitely helped me a lot brought me out of my shell so if you need to bring somebody um, along with the shoot um, you know and, and who also is probably a photographer um, with one model you know that also helps the model as well because if you think about it from their aspect uh, meeting with a person one-on-one could be intimidating they could be scared they could be afraid of like oh what if this dude is a creep you know we're meeting at this sketchy place you know there's not people around it they don't feel safe but if you bring a second person which we've we've done a lot is they feel more safer and they feel a more open since it's more of like a group kind of a event rather than like a just one-on-one type of a uh, a shoot so we definitely uh he, he definitely like brought out the extrovertedness out of me and um you know just like asking them small talk about their day and uh you know where they work at and things like that just like conversating with them about s- simple things you know can op- can go a long way because um and then once you start with those small talk then you know you'll talk to them a little bit deeper and uh one thing that we always mention too advice for uh beginner 
and amateur photographers is like talk before you get into the shoot you know a lot of people who do uh, a lot of shoots you know just obviously just think of work and right when the model shows up they start working but no we actually right when the the model shows up we don't go to work right right away we talk to them we we ask them about their day you know small talk get to know them where they're from you know uh what they did today you know uh what are your plans for the future things like that and um that icebreaker really helps the overall product and the overall shoot so um yeah that is something that i feel like you know that could help a lot of introverted people i feel like a lot of us um you know, come from the tech side of things. You know, we're introverted, we're gamers, we love technology, we love cameras that produce high quality, all these like little nitpicky stuff, but we don't really realize what communication skills it takes for um, these shoots and no, stuff like that. That, yeah. that was already a great way to put it. I'm not yeah. even gonna add on top of that because yeah. I can't fe- I, I can't speak for myself because I am extroverted. So, you know, everything that John pretty much mentioned was I would say accurate for, you know, an introver- right. introverted person. Um what I would I, I definitely want to say is uh, you know, kind of going into one of our last topics for this this part of the uh, episode is your rep your reputation, guys, is going to speak for yourself. Um you definitely want to keep a good reputation when you reach out to models reach out in a professional manner you know create like a word document or whatever document that you have on your phone and resend it to the model like i feel like this is going to be something that you're going to need to do every single time as long as you sound professional and you also look professional on your instagram that's all you need guys Mm -hmm. like models are gonna ask other models who you've uh, worked with and Facts. to see if you're a professional or not reputation is big no, that's is. all it is honestly reputation is big so whether how you speak to a model how you approach a model and how you work with a model is going to be the biggest things like a model is going to ask so keep that in mind um like i said it, it you just gotta keep yourself you know uh have that professional reputation when you're meeting up with the model and such yeah it goes a long way yeah it goes a long way there's really not much to say about that (laughs) uh but you know we gotta get into our game the artist your drop if you guys have not heard it it's the artist your drop roulette yes sir here on the artist your drop of course we want to bring something new and exciting to the show so today we're gonna play a game called artistry roulette here is how the game is gonna go We're going to choose a number between 1 and 6, and each number will contain a random question, which we only have 15 seconds to answer. Each question that goes over 15 seconds will cost us a sip of this drink. Yes. Corey and John. And John. Are you you ready? ready? Yes, Yes, we we are are ready ready. to rumble. (laughs) (laughs) We are ready to go, all right. John is reading off all the negative numbers. I'm going to read off the... uh, Odd, odd numbers. You said negative. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Here we go. Here we go. Okay, the drink got me. He's going to be reading off the odd numbers. I'm reading off the even numbers, guys. So here we go. Starting with question number one. Okay. Uh, wait, let me get the timer oh, ready. Oh, no, guys. No, it's, yeah. it's already ready. I just okay, need to go okay, to the... Okay. To, okay. Question number one. Chris Brown or Usher and why? Oh. Start. Usher. Why? I grew up with Usher. That was the first album I ever bought in 98 mm. was My Way. Ooh, Always My gonna Way. Always going to go back to Usher. Okay. Nine I seconds. love Chris Brown. Yeah. Yeah, I love Chris Brown. No matter me what, too. I love Chris Brown. But Chris Brown definitely looked up to usher he did you know but i've always looked up to usher he was definitely one of the first artists i've ever listened to when i i'm old guys (laughs) i'm old you know the the first cd player my parents ever bought in 97 or 98 Mm -hmm. around uh for me was um i forget the exact speaker system it was but the first cd they ever bought me was my way by usher so usher has always been my go-to he's always going to be one of the artists i look to look up to and 
Chris Brown, though, you know, he, he's the same killing as me, it, yeah. you know, but he's also killing it. Yeah, so. Chris Brown is definitely, like, my age, so, you yes. know, um, I always listened to Usher growing up. Uh, what, what's that? What's the album that came out after My Way? 8701. It, yeah, 8701 yeah. was definitely, like, it's still I still play that to this day, you know, that album is goaded. Um, and, you know, Usher definitely paved a, uh, the way for Chris Brown and other artists, too. Oh, he did. Same thing as Michael Jackson paved the way for Usher. And know? that's my idol right, right there. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, like, but Chris Brown is the one I could mostly relate to because of what um, he's gone through. I mean, I never beat up anyone or anything <laughs> like that. Beat up any girl or so, yeah. shit like that. But other than that, like, you know, we're, we're also the same age. And, yes. you know, he's always um, following the trends and he's mm-hmm. always hip to what is and knowledgeable of what, what is uh, going on in the music industry. So, you know, if I had to choose, it would be hard. It's almost a tie, honestly. Yeah, I would say it's that. It's almost a tie. But I think I would have to choose Chris Brown. But yeah. Usher is definitely the GOAT. Yeah. And uh, he has residency in Las Vegas Las right Vegas. now. And I definitely want to see it. Yeah, oh, I do too. Yeah. I haven't seen him since the OMG tour. The last time? Yeah, no, yeah. the same time. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I've been too. to all of his tours. I've been to uh, the, my, you know, I forget what the tour was at the time. It was my way, but uh-huh. uh, eighty. I went to the 8701 tour, the OMG tour. Damn. Man. That guy just knows how to put on a show. Yeah. I he, saw he recently came out with the Tiny Desk, and yeah. you could just tell, like, the level of experience he has. The, this one? Yeah. <laughs> watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Hey, but, yeah. but just from that simple performance, you could tell the amount of experience that this man has because no, you know as a performer and you know i used to dance as well as a performer when you can and, and as like any artist too when you um find uh gaps to where you're comfortable in being quiet or being silent or like pausing into the things you say or pausing into your movement you know says a lot about your confidence and your like stage presence mm-hmm. so as a performer like you could already tell, like, this man is, like, no. the GOAT. Yeah, he's, he's, the, he's goat. the GOAT. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, okay, I can't say that on my end. Right. Usher is definitely somebody, you know, I, I, I've I looked up to. He was definitely an inspiration for me. But mm-hmm. you guys have watched this podcast. You know Michael Jackson is my GOAT. Of course. Like, you know, he he's always the one. I grew up listening to MJ since I was a kid and, you know, mimicking his moves mm-hmm. and his music videos. He's definitely one of my biggest inspiration yeah. as far as my no, even mj like talking on a performer as- aspect you know he knows when to explode yes and when to be minimal exactly you know and when you change it up when to speed it up when mm-hmm. to slow it down yes. and that's something that takes an experienced yeah. performer and, to and remember understand. yeah everybody literally looks up to mj oh yeah for like sure. e- usher chris yeah. brown Justin every Bieber. dancer every artist exactly like, yeah, yeah, mj was sure. the go-to you know and that includes me you know right. and like I said, MJ has always just been my go-to when it comes to that. But like I said, Art Usher, mm-hmm. he was the first artist I've ever had a CD. Mm. You know, uh, when it came to Michael Jackson and stuff like that, Pops mm-hmm. had the actual LP, the Ooh. actual big-ass disc oh, and everything. Shit. You know, it was crazy to see. Um, I don't know if he has them anymore. I, You know, the last time I remember seeing them was when I was a kid. Yeah. But... Yeah, I wasn't I, old enough then. My no, fir- you, my first you were a CD, fetus. Yeah. My first CD was T.I. versus T.I.P. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was my first CD. Okay, damn, CD. You, you really... <laughs> that was like in I, middle school, I, I think. I did not know yeah. that. Yeah, I, I had that CD, guys, when I was like literally 10th or 11th grade and oh, i had yeah uh tip versus yeah, yeah no yeah. i i had that album as <laughs> that well that shit was fire that shit is fire that was like so no fire. yeah no joke that 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 shit is fire if you guys had never ser- oh my god you guys gotta throwback. go yeah throw that's a throwback honestly where he yeah. at now yeah yeah, where yeah. He, at now? he hasn't been really doing too much right. you know i mean t- he has uh, a son like, now he's uh producing a lot of music yeah yeah, yeah. no ti times. damn i remember even yeah high school ti was definitely big for me you know like rubber band man yeah. let's get away like that big was, things popping big things popping Little oh things my stop. god that that shit is <laughs> fucking fire no i i as a rapper ti was definitely big in my for in sure. my time you know but 
When you throw it Same. back to like literally my time R and B pop guys, I was only listening to Backstreet Boys and mm. Sync. Wasn't the same. Usher. It wasn't the same. Yeah. Aaron Carter. Ooh, Aaron Carter. <laughs> Aaron Carter. Yeah. But yeah, no, it it was crazy, guys. So yeah. hey, any of you youngins like you know Nipple Boy over here, mm-hmm. hey, go. You got to go listen to that shit. Yeah. <laughs> but as you can tell, we love music. You we know? love that's music. That's why in the general. artistry drop, you know, is crazy. We know that, music. Yeah, and that's why we do music videos because our level of understanding it and goes many years back, and you know, we just love it. And obviously, hopefully, you could tell like, yeah, a lot of the ghosts that we look up to is Thanks. like what we love. No yeah. facts, yeah. and I, I, I feel you know that's very important. Like I, cause I. Th- I feel like people are gonna be like, that guy's fake. Like, right. you know, they they just talking about what they know. But guys, no, honestly, I we we grow up with some good music. We know exactly what we're talking about. You know, not just hip hop and R and B. We listen to the other genres everything. too. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah, no, everything. Like, you know, of course, like hip hop, R and B. That's all big right now. But guys, I even tell John all the mm. time, I. I love 80s, 90s music. Right. That's that's the shit I grew up with. I feel like that's always going to be the best music out there. Like, mm. I can't deal with the mumble rapping and, or know. anything like that, you know. But, hey, everything, you know, it's all up to you, uh, the next generation, to right. lead the way for music. And that's and what the Artistry Drop is all about. Artistry Drop know? is all about. And, mm. we, you know, we try to keep good shit on here. Right, right? exactly. All right, so, you know, we're going to get into my question now. And okay. I feel okay. like this question is very personal for John. Oh, because, you know shit. what? He... He oh. guys, he he needs a woman right now. Oh you know? shit! <laughs> he he uh, needs a woman. Yes, so, I do. Hey, hey, any Hit girls? My line. <laughs> Hit any, my line. any girls out there listening right now? Hey, John yeah. is single. Um, so this question is dedicated to him. So hey, let's go. You know what I want to ask is yes. What are the main traits you look for in a girlfriend? Oh, that's and a good one. And the question starts now. Okay, starting now. Um, the main traits I look for, obviously, personality. You. Um, you could Facts. be, uh, I mean, you can't be like hella ugly, but you could be kind of <laughs> ugly and have a good personality. Um, fucking um, uh, looks, obviously, you got to be, um, you know, kind of fit because I'm all about that fitness. But, you know, you can have a little chub, you know, as long as we're working on it together. And it's uh, 23 seconds, so I'm going to stop it. But, you know, we're going to keep going. Yeah, a little chub don't hurt anybody, you know. He's going to get into more a yeah, little bit, guys. Yeah. He got to take this drink yeah. first. So. Um, okay, I'll Let take him take his drink, drink okay. first. <laughs> little chub ain't working it ain't hurt anybody because you know i used to be a little chubby you know oh, especially no, we, during, we know especially during covid yeah, so yeah. as long as you're willing to work on it together you know hey baby girl like <laughs> i got you you know uh uh you said three things yes okay that was the second thing third no actually not three main traits in general. Oh, main traits. So I'm there a, might I'm be a, more than. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. just, just name, name, all, name, name one name more. Them so, all off. so I got the personality. I got the looks. Um, I guess the third one is also personality wise, but I just look for the the most important thing is you know somebody who is independent and self driven um, because you know I've had girls in the past who you know um, are cool with just I mean I, I'm introverted as well you know I'm, I'm cool with being at home but you know when you just be at home every day don't have any goals you know and just like su- super couch potato <laughs> you know it's like bro like I need somebody who is gonna elevate me and Facts. and I'm going to elevate them and we're gonna be like a dynamic duo you Facts. know I didn't come here from Seattle to just be a couch potato so <laughs> if we ain't working on this together then what are we really working on and that, that is are the, is the three things that I look for in a girl and if you're listening to this right now hit my DMs Oh shit! I gotta give oh, an applause. Yes. I hit the wrong button. I gotta hit the applause for that, guys. Uh, yeah, like I said, you know, John has been single for a little while, but yes, hey, you know, give my boy a girl right now, yes. guys. He he's a good dude, and yes. you know, I'm he's been my best friend for ten years almost. Oof. You know, so I I know this dude. Oof. He he's gonna be good to you. So hey, girls. Yes, sir. Hey, girls. Need a man. John is your Put man. Put in my phone, baby. Yeah, there you go. All right, so we're going I'm to go into the next baby. question. Okay. Question number three. Would you rather be smart but an asshole or be the sweetest person but really dumb? Timer starts now. 
for me, I'd rather be really dumb and sweet, or oh. really dumb and and ask. Or wait, was no, it? no, no, really sweet but dumb. Really sweet but dumb. That's what I uh-huh. what I would be because girls look out for that. I feel like there are a certain amount of girls that look for out out for assholes, but it's the girls that look for sweet guys. Ooh, eighteen seconds. Oh drink. fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I was so close. Yeah, you were close. Yeah. You were close. Yeah, no, honestly, that's how I would be. Like, I feel like I've never once been an asshole to a woman like yeah you gotta respect true. yeah you you gotta respect women um they're definitely they handle a lot more than us oh yeah you know they're they're powerful you know even though they're powerful. <laughs> you know, and no sometimes you know i'll joke around with rachel and you know yeah. say she's we we both say well, yeah. you know you're a small one she's weak and <laughs> hey <laughs> it's all jokes it's of all course. jokes you know like i i love rachel and you know she's definitely a strong i one. love her too <laughs> i know i know no she she's done a lot for both of us you yes. know and she's definitely straightened us out yes a lot you know as as males you know i it's good having a good female in your life because yes. it changes your life that balance yeah. yeah no that balance you know they 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 definitely straighten. that i don't have <laughs> yeah you got, you got, <laughs> hey you got rachel still to help hey, you straighten hey, out yeah, no but go. honestly females straighten you out guys they like i they they will make you a better person than you ever thought they, they think would. of shit that we would never think of facts. <laughs> that, that is facts that is facts and you know that's why i definitely appreciate rachel yes sir. i love her so much you know thank you for you know thank helping you. me and you know nipple yes, and sir. you know with everything that we've gone through but of course. yeah definitely i that that would be my answer okay. um okay we're going into the fourth fourth question for nipple boy mm. um okay this is gonna be i i'm pretty sure i know the answer okay it's an easy one okay uh but guys, the question is Nike or Adidas and why? Ooh, that should be easy, but it's honestly changed throughout the years. You know, I would go with Nike as a company as a whole, but honestly, they've been kind of slacking on their clothing and and Thanks. stuff like that. So I would say Adidas for the clothing. Oh, okay. What, what what's the 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 sixteen seconds? Okay, you still got to take a train. Yes. The, the cutoff was 15. No, so explain a little bit more because, you know, like, of course, we, we are both definitely into sneakers and fashion right, right, and stuff. Right. And that's the reason why I wanted to ask that question because for me, mm-hmm. of course, I love Yeezys and right, all that. Right. I'm me not too. saying it's just because of the the hypeness mm-hmm. or anything. I just love the look of how Yeezys look. And right. we both have a mixture. I have Jordans. I have Yeezys. Right. And I love the bo- look of both, but it's just, like, something about Yeezys. Right. They just give... Like, I, I just love the look of them. Yeah, so, you know, um, Nike has definitely been the GOAT when it comes to the sneaker game with the Jordans and uh, the SBs yeah. and uh, the Dunks and the everything. Dunks, and yeah. the Dunks are com- making a comeback Air now. Max. Air Max. I love yeah. Air Maxes. They're- yeah, but for me, uh, personally, you know, I have wide feet. So a lot he of does. These, yeah, yeah. So girls. <laughs> yeah. So you know what they t- say about wide feet, you know. Wide socks. Oh, I don't know about that. I'm just saying, girls. And yeah. wide beds. No. <laughs> and comfy sheets. I don't know about all and that. And wide pillows. Nah. You know, <laughs> hit my DMs. But anyways, enough about me. Mm-hmm. Um, no, no, more about me, actually, because... <laughs> he you needs know, a girl, guys. The, no, no, the girl. wide feet. T- going back to the wide yes. feet. You know, a lot of uh, Jordans, especially SBs, you know, they are narrow, especially the runner shoes, because I buy a lot of runner shoes because they're comfortable. You know, the uh, the Roches and stuff like, and stuff like oh, that. Oh, damn, I forgot. Yeah, yeah they're very Roches. narrow. They're very narrow. So yeah. when it came to Adidas with the... Uh, prime knit, you know, and especially when they came with the boost, you know, uh, it was like a whole game changer for me uh, with the person with wide feet because not only was it comfortable with the with the boost, but it was also stretchy enough. Um, you know, and I wore Nike runner shoes that had the stretchy material too. I think it's uh, it's not prime knit, but it's called something else. Uh, Easy it, boost. No, no, <laughs> no, no. It's like prime knit, like the stretchy okay. upper upper yeah, yeah. material. And I have a few uh, shoes uh, that has that material. But when it came to Adidas, like it was so. And I work. I mean, I work out in a, a lot of the the boost material shoes, kind of like the. It's not really MDMs, but I think I think it's called like N NXT or something like that. NMD. No, it's not. N- no. N- no, it's like this whole like 
it's not even hyped. I just found it like at an outlet. Oh, and yeah. it, it was there. But it's, I'm not hyped like that either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's a uh, it's wide enough for me to spread my toes. You know, when you're doing those. Squats. You got that wide ass foot. Guys. Yeah, you and gotta you gotta be careful. You gotta spread them toes. That's a wide, That's a monster feet. Yeah, you gotta uh, grip the ground. Uh. If you uh uh deadlifting, you know what I mean when you say your toes got to be monster the ground, ass feet. You know, so yeah, Adidas is definitely killing it with the shoes. Um, obviously with the clothing brand, um, you know, when it comes to workout uh, 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 gear, like Nike does have some stylized workout gear. I mean, definitely with the dry fit and everything, but um, I don't know if, as far as materials go. Um, Nike got the design, but the material and the breathability, I feel like Adidas has an upper hand. Like sometimes um, I keep gravitating towards adidas and not really realizing the, the logo that's on it you know of course if we talk about logo you know nike is is where it's at so you know a lot of times i might get some like backlash and controversy but i do wear nike and adidas on the same day when i go go, work, a true go work out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I, well, that's not hype beast i feel like hype beast would like match everything like they'll go yeah all exactly line, no, nike. no no i feel like you know there's there's been points or there's been times or okay i'll let you finish I'll talk about it. I'll <laughs> but let like you finish. yeah high beast would be like no i gotta wear all nike and you know hat shirt socks shoes pants but and, and all adidas you know on one day adidas day and nike day but for me like it's all about comfortability and usability like for me i feel like um Nike has the best socks in the game because of the dry fit socks and then but when it comes to shoes you know Adidas has some of the best shoes in the game because of the boost and the prime knit of the, of the material and when it comes to shirts you know it really depends on like what I'm working out that day but you know sometimes you know Nike is better for for one day and Adidas is better for another day so it honestly like kind of I, I, I mix it up all the time and I don't care what like anybody says because as long as I get like a good workout a good pump in at the end of the day honestly at the gym nobody really cares you know it really yeah so bad, no yeah. okay okay that makes sense right. okay so I would say when it comes to the gym right that makes total sense mm. nobody's really gonna care what you're wearing like everybody's just worrying about getting that pump in and all right. that but if you're like me where you just care about the fashion and you know the hype beast side of everything you like Guys, you just can't mix Adidas and Nikes together. Like, and you know this. I like, know. you just can't do that. Like, if I had a choice, I wouldn't. Yeah. When yeah, I go yeah, out, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Don't. When you when you go out, and yeah. that's why I'm glad you made that point. Yeah. It's like you know when you're at the gym, yeah. Who the fuck is gonna care? Like, you're right. you're just there to work out and stuff. But there's been times where I've been out and about, you know, on the streets of LA or you know Disneyland and all that shit, and I've actually seen people mix Adidas and Nikes, and in my head I'm thinking damn this person really isn't like a true hype beast or any and i'm not a hype beast either guys but I, I i love fashion and you know the fact that rachel's uh you know she went to fashion school it, it definitely taught me more about fashion and you know what what brands to look out for and stuff like that but you just would never see me wearing nike and adidas at the same time like th those are just two big brands that you just cannot combine for sure, I would wear like Champion and Adidas or Champion and Nike like at the same time. I love those both brands, but I feel like it's just in society now. Like Adidas and Nikes are just one of the two biggest athletic brands and hype beast brands you just cannot combine. Any yeah. other brand you can combine except those two. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's just how I feel. Like yeah. I, I've never, I've never once worn Adidas. I have Adidas socks and I have Nike shoes. I, you would never see me wearing those at the <laughs> same time. You know, right. and it's just something you learn. And you know, I watch a lot of hype beast videos and you know, hype hype beast YouTube creators, and they talk about that all the time. And right. you know, it's just you know, if it, <laughs> if you want to be legit, like it's just something you don't want to do. But you know, like I said, I'm not a hype beast or anything like that. I just love those brands, and it's probably you know, it, it's actually not probably it's something I would just never do. But right, right. you know, like you mentioned with the gym and everything, that yeah, makes total sense. So yeah. who cares, guys? All right, so we're gonna move on to the next question, um, and this is my last question, and it might be a tough one. Wait. We're on five. Are we on five? Is it your question? Yes, yeah, my question. You just asked me about Nike or oh, Adidas. Oh, shit. <laughs> He's, done. Okay. He's done. He's done. Okay. He's done. So okay, okay. my last question, okay. which is number five, and then he has to ask number six. Yes. Okay, I'm um, six. Yes. 
you're six. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, you're done. <laughs> I'm done. It's creeping up on it. Yes. So now that you're a grandpa, <laughs> he's not really a grandpa. It's an no, inside not, joke. Yes. Right? You know, I don't want to hear you know all the backlash and all that <laughs> shit. But he he, I, it's an inside joke. He looks. No, he is old, but he looks young. Yes. So that's just an inside yeah, joke. Yeah, Let's okay. get it out the way. Yeah. And now that you're a grandpa, what is one thing that you could do when you were a teenager that you could you wish you could do now? Timer starts now. One thing you're Damn. that you wish you could do now that you could. I'd do say as a I would be. I I would want to be more introverted or extroverted during that time. Oh. Uh, I know I'm going to pass that time. Yeah, why? Uh, I'll take a drink right now. Okay. Ooh, it made him think. Let oh. me... No, that's a good one. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, like I said, you know, during my teenager times, I was definitely not an introverted person. Right. I feel like once I had gotten done with high school and... Mm. Um, you know, went on to my adult years of getting a job and all that. Like, I, I fully opened up my shell. Mm. I, I fully opened up myself. What I would say is during my high school times, like, I would, and my, that's my teenager times. <laughs> yeah, <right. High> school. <laughs> that's my teenager times. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely would have been a lot, I, I wish I was a lot more open to people. I wish I was a lot more extroverted so you were introverted at that i was time. introverted at that oh. time i was super shy that's hard and to I, see i, I thought yeah. i told you this before no, i thought i no. mentioned it but yeah you know during we're my getting the exclusive <laughs> right now <laughs> it's an exclusive yeah. no like guys like this is you can ask cj and all okay. them like i was just a shy guy shy guy at that time like oh. you know um i i never had a girlfriend through my whole years of middle school or high school oh really i was so shy meeting girls like mm. i had I don't know if I should share this story. Yeah, you should never heard this story. It's exclusive. Okay, okay. I, well, like, it, this goes back to middle school times. Okay, okay. so I'll, I'll try to get if through. They it. make it this far. Okay, this, yeah, they, yeah, okay, okay. You really guys real will love fans. this shit. Yeah, yeah, you know, you guys are real artistry fans. Yes. But uh, I'll, I'll try to get through this as fast as I can. So middle school, um, you know, I had this. I I, I won't name drop anybody oh, because no, you don't need to. Yeah, yeah, no, no name dropping. But uh, I had a crush on this girl in middle school. You know, I. During this time, I was super shy and okay. stuff like that. I was super fat, super chubby. Yeah. Uh, the different, <laughs> <That's true. laughs> you've seen the photos. Yes, you've seen yes. the photos. Uh, but during this time, my cousin Alicia, mm. popular, mm. friends with all the popular people and all. Yeah, yeah friends with po all the popular people. So we were just totally opposite. And you know, um, I would just have you know talks with Alicia, my cousin. She was the popular girl at school, and right. she was a uh, grade higher than me too. Mm. And the thing was, and this is the funny thing, is her she was friends with the sister uh that you liked. That I liked. Yeah, and uh, she was popular too. Ooh. She was popular too. And ooh. um I told my cousin that and she was like, Don't be shy, blah blah blah. Like, you oh, know, just shit. talk to her and stuff. And even even Alicia told her uh the girl I had a crush on, the sister of yeah. her, she's like, Oh yeah, Corey has a crush on her. Ooh. So and then everybody pretty oh, much knew shit. I had a crush yeah. on her on her in the in middle school and stuff. So, you know, here comes, like I said, you know, me being the chubby boy, the fat boy, I wasn't really popular. I knew the popular kids, you know, mm -hmm. I would hang with them here and there, but I wasn't like friends with them or anything. Like but, to paint a picture, he was like the I think it was the bully from recess. <laughs> Or like the sun from King of the Hill. <laughs> like, like I wasn't that like that. I wasn't, I wasn't like that. Like I said, like I, I literally had, it, it, I, I literally had connections to all the popular people. Yeah, like yeah. I said, he was like, but my, you were just shy. Yeah, I was just the shy one. Yeah, yeah. I was just the shy one. My cousin was okay. super popular. You know, she knew all the popular people, so it was like mm. I could talk to her, and then she would talk to other right, popular right. and help me, you know, and stuff right. like that. And she did help me. And you know, mm. the the thing is, when it came to this girl. I had a really crush on. She was the most popular girl. I'm Ooh. wondering if I should talk about this story. I'm like, yeah, you should. Okay, okay, I feel like okay. it will help other like, people. This is going to backtrack to okay. a, a little bit. Okay, so okay. when I... Okay. As long as you don't mention names, it's No, fine. no, no yeah. name dropping. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't want to talk too long uh, yeah. on this podcast about, like, my personal <laughs> life. But this is... It, it's kind of a funny story because okay. this is a story I've told... I, I'm pretty sure I've told you, but I've told Rachel and okay. stuff like that. But we're going to go back into middle school, guys. Mm -hmm. um, so... I had a crush on this girl, uh, you know, 
blonde girl, beautiful, and oh, stuff yeah. like that. And mine uh, started with the blonde. Yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's always a blonde. It does. It, it facts, yeah. facts. So yeah, you know, I I had a crush on her, and uh-huh. um, oh my god, like when really? I think about it now, I I feel so like it's so embarrassed right now. I feel, but now that I think about it, I'm like, damn, we progressed so much. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See now, now look at me it, now. Yeah. Now I look no, okay, but uh, of course we ain't gonna get cocky <laughs> like that. No, but I I, I want to say so. Yeah, back in middle school when I just started sixth grade, we had our like, um, uh, what do you call that that thing when you just orientation get orientation. Mm-hmm. So orientation, sixth grade orientation, you have uh, two middle schools. Mm-hmm. People get together. You right, don't right. know all the other people, right? Right, right? But for some reason, all the popular people gravitated towards each other and knew each other and right. were all hanging out. So it was like, you know, I was w- with my homies like. All the Asians, you know, mm. Filipinos, mixture of Koreans, and of course we had some whites in there and stuff. But we're all chilling, waiting for the first class, and uh, this was, you know, the first day of school. And uh, one of the girls I actually had a crush on, uh, I've known her actually since, um, what was elementary? it? Elementary school. Okay. Uh, it was like fifth grade before we entered sixth grade, right? I, I kind of already, already had a crush on her and stuff like that, and... For whatever reason, one of my buddies from elementary school, first day of school, had mentioned that I had a crush on her. She was hanging with all the popular people and all that. And one of the buddies that I I told, he was also kind of popular. Like, he was... Only reason I was good friends with him because we lived in the same apartment. So we were always chilling and I would go over to his place. So he was kind of popular at that time. I wasn't really popular. Uh But, um, yeah, he told her... That I actually had a crush on her. Oh, Obviously, shit. this is something we don't think about. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh yeah, he has a crush yeah. on you. Oh, you know. Oh shit. Okay, so <laughs> the other girl finds out. Okay, so first day of school, uh-huh. we're all chilling, uh-huh. waiting for the bell to ring to go to class, uh-huh. and we're early. Yeah, so she finds out. Uh-huh. She comes. Shit. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter no, anymore. No, I'm just, I'm just it thinking in my head because if this was to go on to another person, I would hate for this to actually happen to another guy but okay yeah so you know i told my i I told his buddy hey i have a crush on her well i didn't think he would tell her right right he tells her probably over aim or something this aim was our our, our way of our our way of communication yeah so he tells her and literally same day brand new uh same first day of school she comes up to me Mm. with all the popular girls that i know it's like you have a crush on me don't ever have a crush on me or something like that. Oh, literally just, shit. literally just telling me oh, like I should not like oh, her, whatever. Shit. And they were all yelling at me. Fucking all the pop- snobby. Yeah. Popular. Uh, yeah. All girls, the popular yeah. blonde girls. They were all doing oh, that. And then that's you know, a mean girl. Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a movie. Yeah. No, shit. it was. And luckily for my Filipino buddy, my uh-huh. Filipino brother uh-huh. came up to me. Hey, Corey, let's go over here. He pulled me away from that situation and oh, shit. took me. Guys, this, oh, <laughs> this is a, a situation I will never forget. Like this oh, was in middle shit. school, and I I felt so embarrassed because it was literally all the girls came up to me, yeah. and the girl that I had a crush on the most was telling me all this. Did you cry? I didn't cry. I oh, didn't. I, I I definitely didn't not cry. But you know, I'm I'm so glad. You know, my Filipino brother came over. I probably would have cried. That's it. I I felt like I could have cried. She could have like pulled this, you aside one on one. But the fact that she like did it in front of all her girls, yeah. like that shit was hey, guys, embarrassing. Is, yeah, it is. And you know, like ugh, I want to say, this is around. <laughs> this is around like 98, mm. 99. Yeah. You know. Uh, I, during my years, at right. least, you know. So I don't know how it was during your and your you went time. to Hogwarts <laughs> as a high school. Yes, so, that's a yeah. high school, but this happened during middle oh, school. Middle school, okay, yeah. Okay, and yeah. so that was during ninety eight, ninety nine. Uh, yeah. Like I said, you know, when Usher's album came out, <laughs> right? You know, and like I said, so you I, really connected with that album because of what you hey, went through. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. No, but honestly, like I felt so embarrassed. I felt yeah. so bad. But but I know, think it's a good thing that you express that because now that people look at you as this extroverted person yeah. that could get anything that he I, wants, yeah, I, I, manifests it and gets it what he wants. You know, it, it didn't always happen. No, like and like that, I said, yeah. I'm not afraid to scare, right. like talk about those stories because right. that's true shit that actually happened to right. me. You know, like I I. You know, I knew all the popular kids and Mm -hmm. I was friends with some of them, uh, but my cousin was more popular. But, you know, the fact that that shit happened to me, it was just it was so embarrassing, you know, like to the point I just kind of wanted to leave. But 
I have good news. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's good I news? I have good news. So, okay. okay, so like I said, fast forwarding, you know, uh, uh-huh. this was probably around eighth grade. It is minimal good news. Okay. Uh, okay, it's minimal good news. So touching back on uh, my cousin, super yeah. popular, her her best friend uh-huh. being the sister of the girl I had a crush on. Okay. And the girl I had a crush on was super popular. She was still part of that group okay. where they all came to me yeah. and stuff like that. And I was still chubby and fat uh-huh. and all that. But, you know, I, I had such a big crush on her that I told my cousin and she told her sister. And then, you know, eighth grade of high school, we were, we were all like, I wouldn't, we weren't coming to almost an end. It was just like, you know, we were in the middle of high uh, middle school and stuff like that. Ending, and yeah. I had hit her up on aim, oh. AOL aim. Oh, if you guys don't know that shit, yes. bye guys. <laughs> but that was, that was the way of communication during that time. Right. And, you know, we were talking and it was just so weird because we would only talk on AIM. We would talk about our feelings on AIM. And when we see, we were in class with yeah. each other, but never talked about it. Damn. It was weird. But we would smile at each other when we come into class. So we already I've kind had, of. I've had yeah. girls like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we already know, you know, it's like yeah. you, you already know you have that connection and stuff yeah. like that. But it's like during that whole time, I never really expressed until the last final middle school dance came oh i hit her up on aim guys oh shit would you like to go to the last school dance so with me? romantic so romantic <laughs> she said yes oh and i was surprised i don't know if go. this i don't know if this was because alicia my cousin was the Hi- popular girl yeah, she, yeah, yeah. I, she was she was friends with all of them if it helped me out I, I have no idea i i never yeah. asked her about it but she said yes and i was like oh my god butterflies in my heart <laughs> and i was super excited and you oh, know shit. now this is where i fucked up oh and i feel bad and oh. i fucked up big time you didn't show up <laughs> you already know oh so yeah day no. day of the middle school dance um uh, no day of the middle school dance i didn't meet up with her oh you left her hanging? i left her hanging but you were nervous i was nervous oh. i was scared because i did not know what to do i was not oh, shit. i was just to that point where i was so nervous i i was not around girls enough i didn't know what to do chickened with my out. i chickened out like Damn. i was a bitch guys like no joke i'm not as i'm not scared to say that i was a Damn. bitch and Did she um, hate you afterwards or okay so this is what happened so that's why i i felt so bad so i went home my she cousin definitely cried had to she so okay so this is okay so my cousin uh-huh. she was living with us at that okay. time already too so i went home and she was like why are you home why are you not over at the dance oh. i didn't know what to do she was like oh my god are you kidding me blah 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 oh. she she got a little mad at me and yeah. stuff like that and um so you know same day i'm on aol aim she hits me up oh she's like what happened to you at the the dance i was like oh. i'm so sorry like I got so nervous. I got so scared and oh, I, I did not know what to do, you know, and I, I'm so sorry, you know, like if you don't, if you don't forgive me, I understand it's my fault. Like I was just so nervous. I didn't, it's like, no, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't take it offensive. Mm-hmm. She had her friends there anyways, you know, uh, but she, she did say she was waiting for me. She said she yeah. was waiting for a dance and stuff like that. So I was yeah. like, you know, I told her I'm so sorry, you know, like <laughs> I, I'm just not that this kind of guy and stuff Damn. like so you know of course time goes on we're still in the same class we see each other the same fucking days yeah. and everything and uh the last thing pretty much what happened to us or the last thing that we said to each other was sign our yearbook you know i yeah and she gave me a picture of her uh her uh herself like her yeah yeah uh from school senior picture yes or, uh, or no, no, no middle senior, school middle, eighth grade picture. picture yeah and then i gave her one of mine oh. and um yeah, that's that's pretty much she it. She didn't write anything deep. No, no, no. She she wrote in my yearbook. Uh-huh. Did she just said I was like cute and stuff oh, okay. like that? Like just like I, I have to show you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mom yeah. and dad are shipping me all yeah. the, my yearbooks and stuff. I, I would just walk in. We can't talk about this. No oh more. no, <laughs> she, already, she already knows okay. about this story. But yeah, no. Like I said, like it, it it's it's crazy. Like I was so shy at that time, and that's pretty much all she said was that's like crazy. Yeah, she, I didn't know you were introverted. I Ever. was no, I was super introverted. Yeah. yeah, she she pretty much you know just wrote in my yearbook, yeah. oh something cute, blah, blah blah, and then I wrote the same exact thing in her yearbook, and that's pretty much how it ended in our eighth grade, you know, and Damn. yeah, like other than that, 
we we, we were yeah. done you know and yeah. i yeah like i said now that that's i look crazy. i never thought about that back yeah. then until we talked about this podcast but i'm like damn yeah like i was just super introverted yeah. i i had no chances with girls yeah. and stuff like that i so. won't speak on my story we'll talk about my story on the on the next podcast where it's <laughs> that me was and a him. Long one. that was that a long was story a long one. but mine is actually the opposite yeah. you know i started out as an introvert and then i became extroverted throughout high school but We'll save my story for another time because Thanks. we're running out of time we for are. this podcast. And I'm sorry, guys. Like, maybe this this <laughs> that story did help you guys, or yeah. maybe understand more about me. But right, right. yeah, I, I was a introverted person, and you know, I, I I didn't really have a lot with you know a lot to do with girls. So exactly. Yeah. So Let's hope for <laughs> my everyone. last question, yes. guys. My His last, last question. question. Okay. This is a. I I would say this is a difficult one. Ooh. Because you love this. Oh. And I love okay. this. And she loves this. We, we all love this. <laughs> okay, so. Okay. My question, my last question is. Okay. If Asian food did not exist, what ethnic food would be your go-to? Okay, timer. Oh, I don't have the timer. Timer starts now. Um, I would have to say, if not Asian, it would have to be probably Mexican food. But Why? Um, because I love fucking tacos. I love pozole. I love fucking uh, carne asada fries. I love so much in the Mexican food. And you're over, food. for sure. <laughs> yeah. That was like 15 seconds. Yeah, yeah go ahead and talk about it. Oh, you gotta but yeah, take that drink. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> but, yeah, if you guys didn't know, like, my, I have two stepdads. My, my step, my first stepdad, he's Mexican. So my brother and my sister, who are younger than me, are both half Mexican, half Lao, and um, uh, so I have like a whole separate Mexican side of the family, and I have a whole like Asian side of the family, and then my second stepdad, he, he's black, so I have a whole, whole like African American side of the family, so I've been really like, um, uh, ex uh, like exposed to a lot of different cultures, but like I would say like my go-to besides like American food, of course, like. Asian food has best definitely been my top top of the food chain and then I would say uh, Mexican food because Mexican food is just so flavorful it is. you know and I'm still f trying to find good places in LA um, to to find good Mexican food you know I I mean, we went. We we've been to that one spot. Yeah, uh, that one spot is is good in Burbank. I forgot yeah, what it's yeah, called. Yeah. Like uh, something amigos. Trust amigos, amigos. Los Amigos. Los Amigos. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That place is good. But I'm still trying to find like a go to place that I haven't found. I found yet. I have a couple of places in Seattle, but you know, I was born in Seattle and I moved to Fresno, and then uh, I lived in Fresno until like I was in middle school in Fresno off the top has the best Mexican food I've ever had probably like comparable comparable to Mexico of course mm -hmm. but like Fresno I, I don't know maybe because it's closer to Mexico or whatnot and most people migrate there but like Fresno has the best Mexican food in it and that's and, what he did it, say yeah and it, 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 it it's hard to compare when you've had the best so I don't know I just been really picky and I, I haven't found the place but yeah mm -hmm. Mexican food definitely my top two besides Asian food. And to yeah. cut it short, I would say Mexican for myself as yeah. well. I, oh, know, I know, I know you yeah, love you know, Mexican I food. I love Mexican food. So I love Filipino food and that's, you know, that's my, my uh, Filipino side of speaking, but Mexican food would be my go-to. Right. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. All right. We interrupt this episode with a word from our sponsor. Are you a gamer and looking to amp up your gaming setup? Then we've got an amazing gaming brand for you. Tilted Nation strives to get their customers involved with their development process of new products in order to establish a personal connection and not to mention truly optimized products for the gaming community. They want to go beyond developing amazing products and to lead the gaming community into a united community that works together. A community that pushes gaming essentials to unimaginable heights. They've hooked us up with amazing gear such as this gaming headset stand, mouse pads and this awesome laptop rgb stand right below my laptop and now they're hooking you guys up use the discount code artistry drop on their website link below and receive a 15 percent discount now back to the show as you know we kept this too long we gotta <laughs> move on to the next topic okay right. so the next topic we want to touch on very shortly is ig models versus agency models so you know 
in the beginning for me, of course, kind of what we talked about, we were working with a lot of just models in general, IG models, model, whatever you want to call them. You know, it, it doesn't matter. Like, I think before we dive into it, we should like uh, kind of differentiate what makes an IG model and like what agency model. You know, of course, like we don't like to use the term IG models, but you know, it's been becoming a trending topic, and you know, a lot of people do call them IG models. Basically, any model that only posts on Instagram, Instagram yeah. who is not affiliated with the agency, yeah. of course. Um, you know, and not to say that they aren't real models because there is like a lot of models who post on Instagram who are not affiliated with the agency, but that doesn't discredit, you know, the the model that they who that they are, you know, and stuff like that. But there is like IG models uh, below that, I would say, you know, if we were talking about, you know, if we were putting them into tears and yep. things like that, Facts. who just like want to post photos because they think they look good. You know, and not really pursuing the art of modeling and not really wanting to become a part of the agency, not really wanting to uh, do commercial and stuff like that. So they just like posting photos just because they like posting photos. And that yes. is what we're talking about when we mention IG models, those people yeah. who just like to post just to post. Yeah. And, you know, that is um, some of the stories that we've we've encountered and basically that i just want to clarify like that's who we're talking about you know um who people who are not really passionate about modeling and mm -hmm. just post fit and no fit and that's a down. great way to put it i feel like um i wouldn't have put it any way better than that because mm -hmm. that's pretty much what it is i mean that's why we don't like to clarify people as an instagram model because in general they're just people that like take photo taking photos and love posting themselves that's right. all it is and that's how everybody starts right, right. in of general course, yeah. you know we we all started that way as when it comes to a photographer like okay. you know we mentioned before we're taking photos of our friends family and dogs and whatever mm -hmm. like that's how we started mm -hmm. well when you move up you got to take photos of instagram models like people right. that just love taking photos of themselves posting themselves on instagram and that was pretty much it like was it difficult like what was it difficult working with people like that no mm -hmm. you know the reason why because i feel like in seattle we didn't have an really an opportunity to work with people that were in agencies anyways Perfect. in general mm -hmm. we only had the opportunity to work with people that just wanted the cool photos right. hence IG models, you know, right. and we we won't call them that. You know, like I said, it's just a a, a term everybody kind of uses nowadays, anyways. Mm -hmm. But right. yeah, that that's just what it was, you know. Like when we were living in Seattle, everybody just wanted cool photos, mm -hmm. whether you wanted to take it inside, outside, whatever. Like it, right. it it didn't matter as long as you're taking, as long as you're a good photographer, you're taking good photos mm -hmm. of them. And they're able to post it on their Instagram. We're able to post it on ours. That's all that really mattered. Hence, IG models. Right, right. You know? Um, and that's what I feel like, though. We kind of both helped each other out when you're a beginner phot photographer mm -hmm. and when you're an IG model. Because IG models don't necessarily know how to pose themselves and such like that. It was yeah. like... Because they're starting out and beginning They're starting to, out. Yeah. We're, we're also beginning and starting yeah. out, you know? So it's like we're all kind of learning together on, on this path of photography. But of course, yeah. as the photographer, it's like you're taking this shit kind of serious. And of course, of course in, my, in my mind, I'm taking this shit serious. Right. But and then in the IG model's mind, it's they're like... They're just there for the photos. They're, the, they're just there for the photos. Right. So it's like... Of course, we can all kind of bounce ideas off of each other. Maybe that model has a different idea than I do. Mm -hmm. Great, we can let's let's go ahead and use that, you know. Um, but that's pretty much what it was. Like you know, it was just kind of we all helped each other. Uh, we were all getting just getting into it, diving right. into photography. I had I really had no idea about photography uh until you know working with family friends and you know pets and stuff like that they also felt the same you know it was like they were they were just wanted some cool photos and i feel like 
that's a Seattle thing because mm. we really there really isn't that much models out there. There's right. a lot of models side to agencies, but I would say there's not a lot of models out there that were just kind of trying to take photos at the time. And right. we're talking early guys. I feel yeah. like I feel like now nowadays there's so many out there in right. Seattle. Like since we've left Seattle, there's so many out there that are, you know, uh, upcoming models and trying to get into agencies right. during the time we were just practicing around you know 2014 15 there really it wasn't really that popular you know photographers and videographers were just kind of blowing up in the game exactly. like very slowly and you know now we're in a, a city where it's just big and it's right. easy to collaborate with just models in general or other photographers and exactly. stuff like that no yeah for sure like definitely like sh you know shooting with these I ig models has definitely been you know something that like he mentioned like we grew together you know uh, we we were amateurs as photographers and they were amateurs as models so you know we kind of worked together but you know obviously as a photographer we took it more seriously because we already knew in the future we wanted to take this as a career path mm -hmm. for the model ig models who just like to take photos because they look cute for whatever reason um you know they weren't really looking at it in the same path as a like as a career you know they just wanted to take photos and they they were down and you know they'd done it before they're confident in themselves so they're like yeah whatever let, yeah let's, let's just do it and um this content for us so it's it's kind of like a give or take but it definitely does come with its pros and cons and we'll touch a little bit about it like when we get yeah no definitely i would say you know um agency models definitely have a level of professionalism uh, they know how to pose, they know right. how to go into a shoot and stuff like that versus, you know, just these models that you meet on Instagram right. and stuff like that. It's like, it's totally new to them. They've never had this kind of experience. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love working. And I, I'm not saying I only love working with just agency models or anything like we that. Work with both. Yeah, we yeah. work with both. It, it Honestly, you could build good relationships with both people, people that love just getting their photos taken and people that love just uh or that work strictly with agencies but right. it's just you can tell the difference of professionalism with each one like right. agency models just know how to go into a shoot how to pose themselves you really don't have to do anything versus instagram models are just models um you you kind of need to help them you yeah, kind of need, need to pose them. them yeah you need to direct them mm -hmm. a lot more and stuff like that that's what i would say is the biggest differences between right. them, dude. There's really not much other things I can really say it's on it. It's basically like professional and like yeah. non-professional. Mm -hmm. You know, if you work with a professional, of course, they already, um, obviously, they already practiced their poses. They already did a lot of work behind the scenes and they obviously, you know, are with the agency for yeah. a reason. So they know what they're doing and we know what we're doing because we've had past experience yeah. too. So it's definitely easier to work with somebody who already knows what they're doing rather than, you know, somebody who's just an Instagram model and just exactly. like taking fit photos. Yeah. yeah, no, exactly. And yeah. uh, another key difference would be agency models. They mm. work with bigger brands, bigger right. companies and stuff like that, so, which means they're able to work with larger uh, a, a larger foundation right. you know they they work with bigger companies that a lot of people would hope to work for right. um, versus you know a lot of smaller people right. um, so that's why I would say you know working with agency models if you land a job with an agency models mm -hmm. you gotta act professional in a certain way because they already have that certain extent of professionalism right. um, you also got to realize once you work with these models it could broadcast to bigger, right. um, bigger companies for R your ripple work. Effect, yeah, 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 it's a ripple effect because you know mm -hmm. once the uh, these agency models post your work and they tag you, uh, and majority of agency models will tag you because right. they know how it works. You know, right. so once they do tag you, other people that follow them and such might follow you or look right. at your work and might want to work with you. So yeah. you do got to realize that once you work with these bigger agency models. You might have these random people asking to work with you or these bigger companies wanting to work with you, but that should not be an issue at all. Like, right. look at who these people are hitting. Uh, look at these people that are hitting you up. See whether their work is, you know, worth working for right. and stuff like that and going from there. But, yeah, that's another big thing is, like, 
agency just has so many connect connections with other companies yeah no like yeah you never know who you're gonna who um you're shooting like what kind of connections they might mm -hmm. have especially in, in la you yeah. know in seattle we kind of like okay we're gonna shoot with the person we're gonna post it they're gonna tag us doesn't really go anywhere but in la you know especially with agency models like they know so many other like small connections maybe they grew up with somebody you know who followed them from high school you know but then now that high school friend is like in this big corporation and then now they see that um oh you work with this model they really like your work they refer to their company like there's so many outcomes and you know that's obviously why we knew we needed to be here in order to um be at the level that we want to want to be at and we knew that this was going to be the next step and we facts. hope that a lot of people uh like us you know take that route as well facts mm -hmm. and you know uh just to touch on it there is nothing wrong with shooting just with normal models outside of agency right. models this is also a way to help you as upcoming photographers to build your portfolio because that's right. what a majority of companies or models look for is a right. portfolio if you guys are only having like a couple photos here and there mo majority or most likely they will not wor work with you right. you don't have much work to show so what i would say or as a big suggestion is get whatever work you can it doesn't matter if they're an ig model agency model it doesn't matter if they're family or friends just put the work in shoot right. the photos post it on your profile build that portfolio because portfolio is the most important thing that's what's gonna land you guys gigs exactly yeah portfolio is everything and don't be afraid to do free work you know that's something that we always express in almost every podcast and episode that it's just me and him that uh you know don't be afraid to do a free work we've done a lot of free Tons. work and you know that's how you build your portfolio that's how you build your experience and that's how you get to where you want to be Facts. once you start um producing commercial like quality work the commercials will come to you uh, that's like 100 mm -hmm. and your work will speak for itself so don't be afraid to do free work and keep doing it and and you know you got to believe in yourself when you know it, you you reach a dark time. So Thanks. just keep going. But one thing that I did want to touch on is like the difference between IG models and uh, agency models. Is like we've met with a lot of IG models who you know are, of course like just want photos because they look good in it, but they also want like a certain like editing theme on their mm -hmm. feed so like if our editing style didn't really fit their theme uh, that they have on their on their feed you know they wouldn't post it and I don't, I don't know I'll have him talk about it afterwards but for me like I took that, I know yeah I know yeah, you went through a bigger yeah, one than I did I took that very yeah. offensive yeah. like for me it's like you know you reached out to me or maybe I reached out to you you know we both uh, have a mutual understanding of what the outcome will be you know you uh, you know my editing style and i know what type of modeling that you do so obviously when i edit these photos they're going to come out the editing style that i've been producing exactly. so why would you agree to shoot with me when you're not going to post it mm -hmm. like I understand for me if I was selfish I'll be like oh yeah I used you for content yeah as long as I get what I want like I don't care what you do with the mm -hmm. photos you know that's a selfish looking aspect as a photographer for, but for me it's more of a relationship it's more of a, uh, a you know a collaboration so like if we're not collaborating and feel mutual about the end result like what are we really doing like um i feel like you know some of the models were just like using me for photos that they're not gonna post um just uh, i don't know maybe they were using me for for clout because i post my photos and i get them more followers because they see um uh them on, on my feed and stuff like that so it was definitely like a weird gray area um and it's very different from uh shooting with agency models you know agency models they know they spent time they spent that time with you they spent so much pre-production on the concept and everything like that that on when it comes to the day of the shoot i mean obviously they're not gonna like all the photos but they at least like like one of them enough to post because they understand like how much work it took to to get there and that at the end of the day is time they spent so you know and that is work for them 
for uh, potential uh, clientele for a photographer or for a magazine and stuff like that. So there's a bigger picture when it comes to working with agency models and they understand like the whole scope of things. Yeah, Facts. what would you say? That, I, honestly, I can't really build on top of that because right. it's literally exactly what I would have said. Like, mm-hmm. I, I feel like IG models, yeah, you know, they're, they're so sp- uh, specific on how they want their feed to look versus... Right. Uh, they don't really see the, the work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Professional models, that's the already their work. Right. So however they look in the photos, um, the setting, all that, that's all they care about. They right. don't care about the theme or color, how you grade it. Mm-hmm. It's all about how they look. Right. Versus IG models, they're going for a specific theme. Like it, mm-hmm. maybe some people want a black and white theme. So you would have to, as a photographer, mm-hmm. you have a different mentality or a different idea of how you would want to edit it, right. but they're like, no, I'll only post it if it's a black and white theme. Right. Well, why the hell did you want to collaborate collaborate with me if you knew this is how I edit my photos? Exactly. You know, that's the point I was. It, yeah, that mm-hmm. exact same point. So mm-hmm. there's really not much I can add on top of what you were saying because yeah. that's exactly how I would think of it. Like, IG models, models in mm-hmm. general, they just have specific themes, and mm-hmm. I feel like that's still a thing today. Like. Mm-hmm. Some people just like going for a specific theme. I changed that mentality a long time ago. I could care less now what my feed looks like. It doesn't really matter to me anymore because I'm posting my work. If you don't like my work, then bye-bye. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's (laughs) That's just how it is. But that's my work. I'm proud of my work. I'm I'm proud of posting my work. Mm -hmm. But if it's not something you want to follow anymore because it's not something you like, then that's just how it is everybody has their own thing yeah and speaking about the next topic is you know uh, we were talking about being collaborative right like for for me and i i I think i'm speaking for both of us you know um ig models are definitely less collaborative because you know they want to look a certain way they have an idea they have an editing style you know there's all these like walls that that you need to go through before they're able to say like oh i look pretty or it's good enough to post um but when it comes to agency models like they understand pre-production and you know when you uh when you both like agree to a shoot they're like okay uh, you know where you think it's going to be shoot shot at you know the location so they could think about what they're going to wear and you know the the setting and the theme and the concept like they build off of you know you build off of each other mm-hmm. essentially and there is i'm not going to uh, you know, talk down on all IG models because there is some who, you know, want to be, you know, in that professional field and who will, you know, do those things. But I would say in um, a broad scope, like most of uh, IG models, you know, aren't willing to go that far. They just agree to every anything that the photographer has to say. As long as they look good, you know, they'll, they'll go with it type mm-hmm. of thing. But with uh, agency models, they really um, are, you know, in tune with the groundwork and you know i have a a, a lot more respect for them as as well as a, as a creative yeah. as well and i would say another thing is you know you know there's less uh weird and awkward stories when it comes to like agency models you know when we first shot we shot with a lot of you know ig models and uh you know close friends friends of friends and stuff like that and you know we will always come up come to like these IG models who are like awkward and shy, but you know, on their Instagram, they're so extroverted. They're so extra wearing like dresses and stuff like that. We mentioned on another podcast where like, you know, we uh, reached out to this girl um, who was like, so like, you know, girly. this wasn't just one time. This yeah. was on the podcast. Yeah. This was multiple yeah, we, times. Yeah, we mentioned this yeah. a lot of times. Yeah. We're like, she was just like super girly on her IG. But then when we saw her in person, she was like total tomboy, which is, you know, it's not nothing is wrong with that, of course. But like, um, uh, it she was tomboy. Not only on top of that, like she was very shy. She didn't talk to us. You know, she was like mute. Like we asked her a she question, was she would just look at us and not say anything. Yeah. Like it was, t- it was a terrible it was weird, guys. experience. It was weird. And we've dealt with a lot more um, of those types of scenarios when it came to IG models it's more of a gamble but when when it comes to these agency models like they're professional they're talkative you know of course like it 
it's different from person to person and model to model. Like you deal with different personalities, but at the end of the day, they know how they should act on a professional, you know, setting. And, you know, just like when you go to work, you know, you're like, you might act a different way at home, but then when you go to work, you know exactly what you're, what you're going to do and how you should act. So it's the same thing when it comes to these agency models. And, uh, yeah, we, we dealt with, um, a, a lot of, uh, professional models and, you know, it's definitely hasn't been any awkwardness. And we've had models who, uh, actually told us that, when it comes to photographers, they have to coach the photographer and talk to them more often because the photographer is shy. So, yeah, it's definitely a, a, a give and take. Yeah, yeah and said. like I said, you know, a lot of these uh, models that have been part of agencies, they're able to express themselves a little bit more to us because they become pretty good homies of ours right, right. and stuff like that and tell us stories. And, <laughs> you know, it, some of the stories they have to tell us, you you guys, if you guys watch the episodes, they have told the stories on there, but it's weird, you know, like mm-hmm. I said, it's, but what I would say is photography, and I've said this before, is photography is a great way to open up your mind, to yeah. open up if you're an extrovert, because yeah. you're going to talk no matter what. Mm-hmm. If photography in general does not still help you guys talk and be a little bit more open and try to be extrovert, mm-hmm then I don't know what to tell you because right. I feel like it's it's such a great, um, you know, art form where people can open up a little bit more and try to be themselves or, you right. know, express themselves a little bit more. But, mm. you know, if it's still not doing that for you, then it may need to be another art form, honestly, because yeah. I feel like photography is just the best one no, to be is. able to open up an uh, introvert person. And, right. you know, with you being an introvert, like, would you agree with... Yeah. Like photography being that specific art form yeah. that would open up an, photography an introvert. Photography and, and film and, you know, honestly, like if I was looking outside of the arts, you know, streaming is a definitely streaming, a, a, yeah. a great way to, because, yep. you know, just like photography, but with streaming, like you're put into the spotlight, you're put, you're on, you know, the camera is on you, you know, you need to be entertaining and it kind of it goes in, the, but you're in the comfortability of your house or your home. So, you know, you could, you know, be a little bit more comfortable and be that person that you need to be on camera. But um, for, with photography, like, you know, it's meeting people, you know, it's talking with them, you know, having small talks. So it's definitely more of a connection than like talking to a camera, of mm-hmm. course. You're talking to people, you're dealing with different scenarios. So it definitely helped me. And, um, you know, if you are introverted and you have a struggle uh, with, uh, you know, talking with people, I would say bring a friend. Like, yeah. you know, that has definitely helped me a lot. Yeah. And, you know, look where we're at now. Yeah. And yeah. I would hope, you know, this episode definitely helps a lot more introverted photographers or just kind of introverted people that are looking to find an art form or um, an activity that can help them open up a little bit more. Because I know there are a lot of introverts out there that want to open up a little bit more and try to get into something where they can be themselves and stuff like that. And like I said, I would say number one is photography. Like you, Mm. you got to be more communicative with, you know, uh, your subjects and anybody in general, you know? So I, I hope this episode definitely helps you guys a lot more. Um, for sure. You know, if you got, if you guys definitely want more tips, you know, let us know in the comments below, because since John comes from a more introverted background, I'm sure he can lay out the ground rules and, Mm -hmm. you know, like stuff that can definitely help a little bit more. Um, you know, when I, I, I would, like I said, you know, um, I was definitely introverted as well, but I kind of just opened up out of nowhere, you know, after hanging out with Ben and CJ, it just kind of opened me up to right. being a new person, you know? It, right. I wouldn't say it was a process. It was just once we started making these stupid YouTube videos and uh, started being random outside in public, mm-hmm. it kind of just opened me up. Yeah. It, I, I didn't really have for to- For the better. Yeah, for mm-hmm. the better, you know? Mm-hmm. And I didn't expect it because right. I was exactly like you, mm-hmm. but- And you did that for me. Yeah, and I did that and, for yeah. you, you know? And mm-hmm. we hope this does that for anybody listening to this episode, you know? we right. We want- you guys to definitely be more open uh to the public to yourself to you know anybody that you work with like being introverted there's nothing wrong with being introverted whatsoever like there are people that are going to be like that for a long time yeah. yeah forever or whatever and that's fine you know but i know there are people out there that want to grow and try to get out of their comfort zone and be more extroverted like i am and stuff like that exactly and, you know we 
we hope these podcasts definitely help uh, coming from like you know introverted perspectives and stuff like that right um so like we said you know if you, if this is helping you or if you guys want to ask more questions or learn a little bit more please drop you know questions in the comments below and we're definitely going to make videos more on it Hell you know yeah. and let us know what you guys want to learn and a little bit more but this podcast has gone on a little bit too, too long. long you know i, I talked a little it. bit about about my middle school high school <laughs> years i i did not expect that but you know john had those questions and yes, stuff like that but yeah guys hope you hopefully you enjoyed this episode we hope you guys enjoyed it if you're not subscribed to the artistry drop or if you're not subscribed to our youtube channel it's the artistry drop if you're not following us on instagram you can find us at the artistry drop and if you prefer just listening you can stream all our episodes on all major podcast platforms and we will see you guys on the next one peace, peace.